Well, friends, we're delighted that you've been able to join with us again for a Bible study. And tonight we're in chapter 24 of the book of Acts, and we're delighted that you've been able to join with us. We trust that the Lord will richly bless you as we look at this chapter uh, for a few moments tonight. Before we do that, can we just bow for a moment uh, in prayer? Our loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity of being able to come before your word. We thank you, dear Father, that, uh, Lord, you have blessed us in so many ways. We just bow and acknowledge thy goodness and grace. We thank you, dear Father, that you've given to us your word. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And so, loving Father, we pray as we seek to learn from your word that you will bless our lives, that you'll challenge that you'll minister to us, that you'll help us. We thank you, dear Father, for your love and your grace. And we ask for your help just now. In Jesus' name, amen. So we look at this uh, chapter, we'll go back again just to, to refresh our memories. Paul had been brought before the Sanhedrin and then uh, had to be rescued by Claudius Lystris. Uh, he was... Uh, then uh, kept in uh, the palace and 40 men had bound themselves together under a great curse that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul and they were working along with the Sanhedrin uh, the plan was that the Sanhedrin would request uh, from Claudius Lystris that Paul would come down to them so that he they, they might clarify a few issues uh, so that whenever Paul came out of the, the castle, that uh, these men were ready to, to, to kill him. Now, Paul's sister's son had discovered this plot and went to Paul and told Paul. And then he was taken to Claudius Lystris and in private uh, shared this plot. And so uh, Claudius Lystris, uh, he uh, sent Paul to Caesarea under armed guard. Uh, 470 soldiers uh, were sent by night uh, to take Paul to Caesarea and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. There was also a letter uh, written by Claudius Lystris explaining to Felix uh, what the situation was. And so we, we read at the end of the chapter uh, where uh, when the governor had read the letter, he asked what province he was. And when he, he understood that he was from Cilicia, the same area uh, as uh, Felix himself would have been from, he says, I will hear thee, I said he, when thine accusers uh, are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. So Paul was kept under house arrest. And uh, uh, after five days, Ananias the high priest descended with the elders. And a certain orator named Tertullius, uh, who informed the governor against Paul. So uh, we have this group from the Sanhedrin. We're not told how many, but just uh, the high priest and the elders. Uh, they came down and uh, there was also this man Tertullius. Now he may have been hired by them uh, as a, a lawyer to present the case. He was uh, an orator. And he was there, the spokesman, presenting the case uh, for, against Paul and uh, speaking in behalf of uh, the, uh, the Sanhedrin. And so uh, he begins when, when uh, he begins to present his case. And when he was called forth, Tertullius began to accuse him, saying, uh, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always, in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. And nevertheless, that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee uh, that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency uh, a few words. And then he begins to bring this accusation now uh, these accusations against Paul now here is a very smooth talker uh, using flattery I don't know how people think that flattery uh, will deceive anybody but here he is and what he is saying is 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 totally untrue um, 
uh, he, he states that, that we have enjoyed great quietness and very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by the providence, our most noble Felix. The reality is that, that, that Felix had put down several insurrections by brut brutality and uh, he, he was earned himself a, a reputation where people weren't, weren't thankful, they were horrified. Uh, at the actions he had caused and ordered a, a massacre of thousands of Jews in Caesarea and many Jewish homes had been looted by the Roman soldiers and, and this man most noble Felix was very far from reality he was a, a, a he had started his life as a slave and because uh, of his his life he had the reputation as a master of cruelty and lust in hell exercise power of a king and the spirit of a slave uh, he was a, a vile man and uh, uh, while he started off as a slave his brother was a friend of the uh, emperor claudius and through that he received freedom and uh, and rose to the uh, the position uh, of governor uh, and, and uh, he was a a vile man and, and here is this orator buttering up and telling him how gr wonderful he is uh, realize that whenever someone comes to butter you up and tell you how wonderful you are they have an alternative motive uh, it's not an honest report uh, but it's just that they want to get their own way and so we find uh, he says notwithstanding that we be not further as tedious unto thee i pray that, that thou wouldst he hear us uh, of thy clemency a few words uh, he says that you know i don't want to labor the point i don't want to uh, to take up too much of your time, you just want to, uh, uh, and he uses this word uh, to, uh, that thou would hear us of thy clemency a few words. Uh, again, this is total flattery uh, that is used. It's it's, it's uh, not truth. He's not speaking honestly. Uh, it's amazing whenever you see, see that word clemency is uh, uh, translated in another passage of scripture where Paul. He says, I, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. So it's the same word. And this word clemency, the meekness and gentleness of Christ. There's an awful difference between this man, Felix, and, and, and the gentleness and meekness of Christ. And so he is trying to impress this man. We have found this fellow and he, he begins to attack the Apostle Paul. Uh, for we have found this man a pestilent fellow, a mover of sedition among the Jews throughout all oh, about uh, throughout the world, and, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, uh, who also have gone about to profane the temple, whom we would we took, and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain uh, Lystras uh, uh, came upon us. And with great violence took him out of our hands and commanded his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom him thyself mayest take knowledge uh, of all these things whereof we uh, accuse him. Uh, and then the Jews also. Uh, so we have this situation where all of these false accusations or these accusations uh, were are presented uh, to to Paul and uh, we find that, that he brings these accusations uh, everything that is said about Felix is false so it's not surprising that everything that they say about uh, Paul is also false and so we find that uh, we, we, we don't need to be gullible uh, by the words of men uh, we always Remember that, that, that when someone comes to you with gossip, you can be sure that they'll go away from you and gossip about you. Uh, we re realize that if you can't trust someone with their words, uh, then it's not surprising that nobody uh, has confidence in them. If, if, if you have a reputation of exaggerating, then everything you, you say uh, will, will be uh, just received as, as a lie not the truth it's not yea nay uh, but uh, the reality and tertullius uh, here is this man he is 
speaking about uh, Felix, and I'm sure if Felix had any wisdom at all, he know well, <laughs> you know that this man's talking a load of rubbish. Now, and and, and uh, anything he's going to say after this is also going to be questionable at the very least. And so he begins his accusations. And he found, he says, we have found this man a pestilent fellow, a mover of sedition among the Jews, all of the Jews throughout the world, uh, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. And he has also gone to profane uh, the temple. And this word pestilent fellow, this is a, a, a literally means a diseased or, or a pest or a, someone, a, a, a plague. Uh, we found this man a plague. And uh, a mover of sedition or insurrection uh, or causing riots uh, throughout all of the world. Uh, and uh, a ringleader. Uh, and, and he uses the name of the Nazarenes, a, a, a despised area. You remember whenever uh, Nathaniel said, you know, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Nazareth, uh, you know, a despised place. And he uses all of these accusations. He's a profane a person he's a, a a mover of sedition he's a troublemaker uh, he's a ring leader uh, of the sect of the uh, and, and again uh, th these accusations were calculated uh, uh, Felix didn't want trouble uh, and any troublemaker was was going to be uh, looked upon very uh, harshly by and then certainly anybody who is involved in insurrection uh, is also going to be uh, stamped out uh, by Felix and uh, to be a ringleader of, of a, a, a new sect that wasn't allowed uh, that, that uh, you were allowed to practice religions but uh, new sects were, were uh, not allowed and to profane the temple was something that the Romans had given permission to the Jews to deal with in their own uh, under their own authority and they would have they they would have dealt with it but then he, he accuses uh, Claudius Lystris that uh, and really it shows how much they they despise the fact that they weren't able to put Paul to death they weren't able to deal with Paul themselves that this had been taken out of their hand and he says that that uh, Claudius Lystris had and uh, with great violence taking them out of our hands we would have dealt we, we we would have sorted this problem out and we would we wouldn't have to trouble you about all of this because we would have dealt with it it was a, a matter that didn't need to come to you but claudius Lystris has, has has brought this and so he presents his case uh, and uh, really at the end of the day he just says well you know you, you need to judge uh, this this whole matter and uh, uh, you know the background you can almost see the picture there's this man this orator with all his flowery words and uh, a good politician and uh, he's presenting this case uh, to try to impress uh, Felix and all of the Sanhedrin and the high priests are sitting there nodding their head in agreement with everything that was said and so they agreed uh, there was no evidence that was presented all of the Jewish leaders were sitting there nodding their head in agreement. Uh, and uh, then Paul is given the opportunity in verse 10. And Paul after and that the governor had beckoned uh, unto him to speak. And he answered. And, and Paul is, is so different. He does not use flattery or, or try to use deception. He just states the facts. And, and uh, he presents the case as it is. He doesn't have to try to manipulate situations or, or present it in a certain way to make it look better. He just states the things as they are. For as much as I know that thou hast been for many years a judge of, uh, upon this nation, uh, I do the more uh, carefully answer for myself. Paul is not afraid because he is standing upon the truth. Uh, and uh, all he has to do is to record and, and uh, give a, a clear account of the truth. It's wonderful whenever we're uh, uh, able to stand and be truthful in all of our words. We can have confidence uh, in whatever situation we find ourselves in. And so uh, he says, because uh, that thou mayest understand 
that there are but 12 days since I came up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither uh, raising up uh, the people, uh, neither in the synagogue nor in the city. Uh, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way uh, which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my father, believing all things that are written in the law and the prophets, and have hope toward God, uh, which they themselves also allow, and that and there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have a, always a conscience void of offence toward God and towards men. Uh, but after many days I came to bring alms uh, to my nation and offerings. Uh, and uh, whereupon a certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with um, multitude or with tumult, uh, who ought uh, to have been here before thee uh, and object if they had ought against me, or else let uh, these same uh, hearsay if they have found any evil doing in me uh, when I stood up before the council, except it be for this one voice, uh, when I cried, uh, standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question uh, by you this day. So Paul sets forth the whole uh, argument uh, for uh, in his defence. That his purpose in coming to Jerusalem wasn't to cause trouble. It was to worship the God of his fathers. It was to bring the financial aid. Now, we know about uh, the money that, that the Gentiles had gathered uh, for, for the poor saints in Jerusalem. And Paul says, that was the only reason for me coming, uh, that, that I might worship the Lord and that, that I might bring this uh, uh, support uh, for my nation. Uh, there, there is no proof against me, any of these accusations. He says, I'm not uh, a promoter of some new sect. But I'm living in the light of the scriptures and worshipping the God of my fathers. Now, the central issue of this whole matter is the resurrection. And uh, really, the, the, the original accuser should have been by law. They should have been here to uh, bring any accusation if they had any against me. So Paul uh, sets forth his case. And, and uh, in, in the midst of all of this, we find uh, Paul affirming uh, the, the, the teachings of the Old Testament scripture. He wasn't taking people uh, away from the word of God. In fact, he says, believing all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul believed the word of God. That's a challenge to many in, in these days. Uh, there are many, even those who profess to be Christians. And, and yet uh, the challenge that we find here in this passage of scripture is do they believe uh, all things that are written uh, in the law and the prophets. Do they believe the record of the word of God? And do they believe what is written in the uh, Old Testament scripture? Do they believe on a literal six day creation uh, as recorded in the word of God? Or, or uh, are they trying to uh, fudge the issue and uh, get away and, and twist the scripture uh, and deny what is actually written in the word of God. There are many who uh, they need to be challenged. Do they believe in a literal uh, universal flood as is recorded in the word of God? Do they believe the records of the word of God? That Jonah was swallowed by a great fish. All of these Old Testament scripture. There are many and they put questions over certain parts of the scripture. And, and they will take parts of the scripture and say, yes, we believe this part, but we, 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 we can't accept this. And yet Paul finds here no problem with all of the Old Testament scripture. He believes it all and he stands by it. And we recognize that Paul is, is 
uh, also standing with the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus believed in Jonah and Jesus believed in Noah's day. Jesus believed in, in marriage as God has ordained it. Jesus believed in creation uh, and, and so Paul stood uh, firmly believing the Bible and, and we, don't, we don't need to be ashamed of the word of God. We can stand upon the promises of God and we find here that Paul presents his case and then it tells us in verse 24 and when Felix heard these things having more perfect knowledge of that way he deferred them and said when Lystris the chief captain has come down I will know the uttermost of this matter and he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty uh, and that it should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister unto him. And uh, uh, we find uh, that he, he was kept in house arrest. So we find here that uh, Felix, uh, he, he fudges the issue. He, he defers uh, the situation. Whether or not uh, this, this, uh, this is having more perfect knowledge, uh, it may uh, mean that, that uh, he, he wanted to find out more before he made a judgment and so uh, Paul is placed under house arrest and certain days uh, uh, and after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla which was a Jewess and sent for Paul to hear him concerning uh, the faith in Christ and so we find that uh, here is Paul uh, and uh, judgment is, is uh, delayed uh, there's there's a postponing of judgment and Paul now is brought in privately uh, into to Felix and his wife Drusilla. Maybe he, he wants uh, Drusilla to hear this man and, and help him to come to a decision uh, or, or maybe uh, there, there are other reasons. Uh, we know that Drusilla, uh, she was the sister of a, a Herod Agrippa II and uh, and Drusilla was, was perhaps a, a very beautiful woman. Uh, and some of the commentators will tell you she was married at 16 years of age. And, but Felix uh, wooed her away uh, from her husband and she became his third wife. And uh, we find here that Paul uh, is brought in and uh, Paul doesn't use any flattery. Uh, um, Paul said on another occasion, my speech and my preaching are not with the enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And so Paul is brought in before uh, Felix and his wife, Drusilla, and they want to hear more concerning the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul uh, uh, says, reasoned, uh, he reasoned. Uh, we realize that that. Uh, Paul, whenever he was presenting, it's not, it's not trying to deceive people. He's not flattering people. He is presenting arguments. He's bringing reasonable uh, light into the lives of people and showing them the foundations and, and the fundamentals and the things that they need to understand. And so he reasons uh, and uh, his subject matter is righteousness, temperance and judgment to come. Here is Paul uh, with a, the boldness of the Spirit of God standing before Felix and he is presenting uh, the, the subject of righteousness. There is a standard that God has set. There is a standard of righteousness that God has laid down in his word. And, and that standard uh, brings men to a place where they have, have to acknowledge that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That man at his best is sinful, vile, wretched. That man without God is without hope in this world. And he sets forth the standard of righteousness and of temperance. Now, there is a personal responsibility for our actions uh, the, the, that uh, we cannot blame our society, we cannot blame our peers, our peer pressure. Uh, we are accountable for our own moral decisions and, and there is a standard that God has laid down and we are accountable and also the fact that there is a day of judgment to come. 
Uh, there is no escaping the final judgment. And Paul presents a clear message to this man that there is a standard that he has fallen short of, that there is an accountability and that he is guilty before a holy God. And one day he will have to stand before God. And so we find that the, the, the judge trembles before the prisoner. Uh, it's not Paul that's trembling in, in the presence of Felix. But it is Felix trembling in the presence of Paul. And Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Many sermons have been preached upon the procrastination of Felix. A, 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 a problem that has robbed millions of souls of the, the eternal hope of heaven. Because knowing the truth, they have put it off, knowing that they need to be saved, knowing that they have sin that needs to be forgiven. They have not sought the Lord. They have put it off to another time. And perhaps even tonight you're listening and you know that there are things in your life and that are not pleasing to God. And God calls you to repent and forsake your sin. And yet you're putting it off. Oh, there'll be another time. There'll be a better time. There'll be another opportunity. But dear friend, we don't read in the life of Felix that he ever had another opportunity. Uh, we recognize procrastination uh, and, and, and uh, wickedness. He had hoped that money should have been given to him of Paul, that he might lose him. And wherefore he sent for him the offer and communed with him. After two years, Pontius uh, Festus, uh, came in Felix's room and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Uh, we realize that uh, uh, the, 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 the Bible, from this passage of Scripture, the Bible is the sole authority for faith and practice. Uh, do you believe the Bible? You can't pick and choose parts of the Scripture. You need to take the whole Scripture, the whole counsel of God. And we realize the only convenient season to seek God uh, is uh, whenever God is calling. No man cometh except the Father draw. And dear friend, if God speaks to us, that is the time uh, that we are to respond. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And uh, we realize here is Felix and uh, he was brought to a place where he knew he heard the word of God. He trembled at the word of God and yet uh, he turned aside uh, and there were other things that, and that he uh, were, was seeking after rather than seeking after the peace and the presence and the blessing of God. May God help us in our own uh, lives uh, to not make the mistakes that Felix made, not, not to uh, be deceivers. Uh, with flattering words, but that we might speak the truth in love, that we might be open and transparent, that we might stand upon the authority of the word of God. And uh, we realize that uh, as a hymn writer says, uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. May God help us to be firm in our convictions and rest on the authority of the word of God. There will be a resurrection of the just and of the unjust. Every man will one day stand before God. Where will you stand? Will you be ready? Are you on the Lord's side? Have you been born of the Spirit of God? Have you had your past blotted out? And have you been brought into the family of God? And have you trusted Christ as your Savior? There will be a day whenever you will stand before God. Don't procrastinate. Seek God, commit your life to him, give your heart to him today and God will richly bless you. May God bless his word. Can we again bow please for a moment in prayer. Our loving father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for Paul. We thank you dear father that his one desire was to live to the honour and glory of your name, to please you in everything. Lord, we thank you dear father that uh, that is uh, something that you want from us, that we might live to glorify your name. And Father, not uh, to seek the, the praise of men, 
but to uh, the well done of God. Lord, pray that you'll bless your word uh, to every heart for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you again for listening. May God richly bless you.